The Fairy Tale About the Twelve Brothers by Brothers Grimm. Once upon a time, there was a king who had twelve children, all boys. Moreover, he didn't want to have a daughter and said to his wife, If you give birth to our thirteen child and it is a girl, I shall have the twelve boys killed. However, it's a boy. If it is a boy, then they will all remain alive and stay together. The queen thought of talking him out of this, but the king refused to hear anything more about this topic. If everything turns out like I said, they must die. I'd rather chop off their heads myself than let a girl be among them. The queen was sad about this because she loved her sons with all her heart and didn't know how she could save them. Finally, she went to... And there is a picture. Went to the youngest, who was her favorite, and revealed to him what the king had decided. Dearest child, she said, go into the forest with your eleven brothers. Stay there and don't come home. One of you should keep watch on a tree and look over her here toward the tower. If I give birth to a little son, I will raise a white flag on the top of the tower. However, if it is a little daughter, I will raise a red flag. <clears throat> if you all see that it is red, then save yourself. Flee into the wild, wild world, and may, and may our dear Lord protect you. I, I will get up every night and pray that you won't freeze in the winter and are able to warm yourself by a fire and that when it is hot in the summer you can rest in a cold forest and sleep. And so, after she gave her blessings to her sons, they went out into the forest, where they frequently looked toward the tower. One of them had to sit on the top of a high tree and con consistently keep watching. Soon a flag was hoisted, but it, was, it wasn't a white one. It was a blood-red flag that foreshowed their doom. As soon as the brother caught sight of it, they all became angry and cried out, Why should we lose our lives because of a girl? Then they all swore to remain in the middle of the forest and to keep on their guard, and if a maiden were to appear, they would kill her with, with no mercy. Oh, so brutal times. And soon after this, they searched for a cave where the forest was the darkest. And that's where they began to live. Every morning, eleven of the brothers went off to hunt. One of them had to remain home, cook and keep house. Whenever they encountered a maiden, she was treated without mercy and lost her life. This is how they lived for many years. In the meantime, their little sister grew up and was the only child left at home. One day, there was a large amount of washing to do, and among the clothes there were twelve shirts for boys. Whose, whose shirt are these? The, the princess asked the washwoman. They are much so small for my father. It was then that the washwoman told her that she had once had twelve brothers, but they had mysteriously gone away. Nobody knew where, be where because the king had wanted to have them killed, and the twelve, sh the twelve shirts belonged to the twelve brothers. The little sister was astonished uh, that she had never heard of her twelve brothers, and during the afternoon, as the clothes were drying and she was sitting in the middle, she recalled the words of the wash wo washerwoman. <coughs> after, <coughs> after giving considerable thought to what she, she had heard, she stood up, took the twelve shirts and went into the forest where her brother, brothers were living. The little sister made her way straight to the cave that served as her brother's dwelling. 
Eleven of them were out hunting, and the only one of them who had to cook was at home. When he caught sight of the maiden, he composed himself and drew his sword. <laughs> Kneel down, your red blood will flow this very second, cried the brother. But the maiden pleased, dear sir, let me live, I will stay with you and serve you honestly. I will cook and keep the house. She spoke these words to the youngest brother, and he took pity on her because of her beauty and spared her life. Later, when his eleven brothers returned home and were astonished to find a maiden alive in their cave, he said to them, Dear brothers, this girl came to our cave, and when I wanted to cut her to pieces, she, she pleaded for her life so much and said that she would serve us faithfully and keep house that I spared her life. Okay, mercy. The, other, the others thought that this would be a great benefit to them because now all twelve of them could go hunting and they were satisfied with, his, with this arrangement. Then the maiden showed them the twelve shirts and told them that she was their sister. Indeed, they were all very happy about this and were glad that they hadn't kill her, killed her. Now the little sister took over all the household clothes and when the brothers went out hunting, she, she gathered wood and herbs and kept the fire going, made up the beds nice and, and white and clean and did everything with zeal and without getting tired. One day, when she was finish, finished with all the work, the work, she took a walk into the woods and came to a place where there were twelve large beautiful white lilies. Since they pleased her so much, she plucked all twelve of them. No sooner did she do this than an old woman stood before her. So when she picked up the flowers, a woman appeared. Oh, my daughter, she said, why didn't you let the twelve budding flowers just stand there? They are, they are your twelve brothers. Now they've been changed into ravens and are lost forever. The little sister began to weep and said, Isn't there any way that I can save them? No, there isn't any way in the world except one that is so difficult you won't be able to rescue them. <coughs> you must spend the next twelve years without speaking. If you say one single word, even if there is only one hour left, Everything will be in vain, and your brothers will die that very moment. Well, the little sister responded by climbing a, a tall tree in the forest, where she took a place. She wanted to sit there twelve years without saying a word, a word to free her brothers, but it, but it so happened that a king was out riding and hunting in the forest. And as he rode by the tree, his dog stood still and barked. So the king stopped, looked up, and was very amazed by the prince's beauty. He called to her and asked her whether she wanted to become his wife. However, she remained silent and only, nod and only nodded a bit with her head. So the king himself dismounted, helped her down from the tree and lifted her up before him into his horse. Then he brought her home. No. Then he brought her home to his castle. Meanwhile, the princess said not utter one word, and the king thought that she was mute. They would have lived happily with one another if it hadn't been for the king's mother, who began to slander the young queen in front of her son. She's a common beggar that you've dug up from nowhere, and she's doing the most disgraceful thing behind your back, said she. Since the young queen couldn't defend herself, the king was led astray and finally believed what his mother said. So he sentenced his wife to death, and an enormous fire was built in the courtyard 
where she was to be burned to death. Soon the queen was standing in the flames that grazed the fringe of her dress. One minute was left before the twelve years of their silence would be completed. There was a noise in the air and twelve ravens swooped down into the courtyard. As soon as they touched the ground, they became twelve handsome princes, prince who in instantly put out the fire's flames and led their sister to safety. Then she spoke once again and told the king how everything had happened and how she had to save her twelve brothers. Indeed, they were all pleased that everything turned out so well. <laughs> Now they had to decide what they should do with the evil mother-in-law. Well, they stuck her into a barrel full of boiling oil and poison of snakes and she died a ghastly death. Uh, that is another brutal fairy tale by Brother Grimm. And this is for today. See you next time with the next fairy tale.